Well, good morning, everybody. I want to talk today about Jesus Christ, the shepherd of our souls. Uh, in the beginning, when God made man, he formed him out of the clay, and then he breathed into him his spirit, and man became a living soul. And it says in Luke eleven forty, it says, Didn't God who made the outside make the inside also? Didn't he who made the physical body, didn't he also make the soul and the spirit that is within us? And you know, the complexity of the, the physical body, uh, we read in Psalm 139 uh, that God says we are uh, fearfully and wonderfully made and how intricately he wove us in our mother's womb. And any even uh, casual look at a biology book or any medical book of any sort shows the sheer complexity of the human body. And now DNA showing us how uh, really complex but the soul is a reflection of it and actually a lot of the things that we God has made naturally reflect uh, the, the, the spiritual things that's why Jesus told so many parables continually because the natural world very much reflects the spiritual world and Romans 1 says this it says that God's invisible attributes and his eternal Godhead are plainly seen in the things uh, of the natural world so I want to talk just Jesus who cares for our soul God he takes care of the inward part and then um, you know we do and take care of the things that are seen and God takes care of the things that are not seen Bill, um, uh, Hudson Taylor they used to say that he prayed like everything depended on God and he worked like everything depended on him there's a part we have to play and there's a part God has to play and uh, uh, we know the difference. I was saying recently, Ruth Graham, Billy Graham's wife, when asked about raising her children, she says that, uh, and a couple of them at, at one point had gone a little astray. And so she says, well, what I did was I took care of the possible and I let God take care of the impossible. The possible, she said, was I can pray for them, I can love for them, I can care for all their physical needs and emotional needs as good as I can. But the impossible things like this conversion, that they be born again, I can't do. Giving them a thirst for God, I cannot do. And that was the things she, she committed to God. And, uh, you know, there is that side of us that God expects us to do what we can do. But he doesn't expect us to do what is in his realm. And one of those things is part of his is the, the keeping of our soul. A little bit of it, as I say, it's our responsibility, but part of it's God's. For example, in Philippians 4, that beautiful part, Paul talks, it says, you know, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. That's kind of us. It's a command. Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. And then he says, let your moderation be known to all men. And then, and then he tells us about our thinking. Think on whatever is true, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is right. Think on these things. And so that is, of course, our part. But there is a part of the soul that is so deep, that goes down so much. It's kind of like an iceberg in the sea. You might have seen that movie, The Titanic, or you've heard about The Titanic. It was the greatest ship at the time ever built. They said it was unsinkable. And it sank on its first voyage because it hit an iceberg in the sea. And it thought it was a, a huge block of ice. But actually, 5% uh, of it protrudes at the top and there's 90% that goes down. And that is the soul of man. There's only a little bar that sticks up. It's like these islands you see in the sea. Sometimes it's a small little island, but underneath it's just the top of a huge mountain that is down in the ocean. And so is man's soul. This is why Psalm 139 says, Lord, you search me and you test me. You see is there anything anxious in me and you lead me in the way everlasting. Because, you know, there are certain things anxieties which we were saying recently are undefined fears and they can be down in that kind of deep part of the soul and they can really trouble us so in Psalm 139 23 says Lord you search me you try me you see is there any anxious way in me and you lead me into the way everlasting because we're not amateur psychologists we're not supposed to be amateur psychologists that's God's business God made us it says in Psalm 100 that Lord we are the sheep of your pasture we are your people you made us and not we ourselves and he'll take care of that part of the soul but we need to take care of the little part that protrudes and we need to take care of the practical things praying about everything doing the practical things God wants us to do 
and he'll take care of our soul. And just as we, as we finish, you know, uh, there can be that anxiety in the soul. There can be bitterness can get into the heart that a root of bitterness in Hebrews says that uh, take careful heed in case a root of bitterness gets into you like deep down a root of bitterness gets in and it troubles you and many other people also and just also if any sin gets in we can sometimes only be aware of the surface part of it and that's all we need to be aware of confess that surface part and it says we confess our sins to God and he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll cleanse all the deep part of us that we don't know about and we don't need to be going scuba diving down into the deep parts of the soul. God made us. We are the sheep of his pasture. It's he who made us and not we ourselves. And, you know, let's be practical. Do all that is in our realm to do. As, as uh, Ruth Graham, Billy Graham's wife says, I take care of the possible and God takes care of the impossible. And Hudson Taylor, they said that he prayed like everything depended on God, but he worked like everything depended on him. So uh, we thank God. Let's keep, give, uh, commit our souls, it says, uh, to him who is a, a faithful, to commit, sorry, commit the keeping of our souls to God who is a faithful creator. He created us, he made us and not we ourselves. And he knows how to take care of our soul. So let's pray and we give thanks. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we just ask that you would cleanse us right to the depths, Lord. And more than that, Lord God, that you said in that Philippians 4, that the peace of God which passes all understanding shall guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So Lord, we praise you. Lord God, cleanse us. Uh, give us joy in the inner part, truth in the inward man, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.